Our next story focuses on another typical example of what's happened with Catholic education in the past half century. Our own Dr. Paul Marano is here to tell us about the disheartening news. Thank you, Kim. A Jesuit university that calls itself Catholic is in the spotlight again for its anti-Catholic actions. In tonight's in-depth report, we look at the latest hypocritical move towards students defending human life. Today is um, the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Catholic Gonzaga University of Spokane, Washington is exhibiting its anti-Catholic leanings again this time for blocking its student pro-life group from hosting Liz Wheeler, a Catholic author, commentator, and talk host. Once we've eliminated pro-life women, unborn women, gun-toting women, Christian women, conservative women, Trump-voting women, Muslim women, moms, and women abused by Bill Clinton and Harvey Weinstein, what kind of women do feminists defend? The university's Department of Mission and Ministry gave no reason for the denial. Wheeler is known for promoting God's law on chastity and the defense of innocent human life, doctrine students desperately need to hear. The sexual revolution was built on lies. You are not liberated by promiscuity. It doesn't mean that you, in order to capture your full agency, that you have to sleep with people in the casual sense outside of marriage. But like most fake Catholic colleges and universities, Gonzaga touts its vague social justice agenda while running from its obligation to defend the whole truth of the Fifth and Sixth Commandments. But I hope you experience this as a really meaningful journey of becoming. Grant Habesetzer, student leader of Gonzaga's pro-life group Zags for Life, told the college fix, the university and by extension the mission and ministry office is more concerned with pushing leftist ideology than they are with spreading the truth of the gospel. He added, this university has lost the understanding of what it means to be Catholic. In the meantime, Gonzaga recently hosted a paranormal investigator who engages in occult practices and has even promoted the unnatural sexuality of the alphabet soup agenda during the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Further, as part of its student life program, Gonzaga contradicts the Catholic faith by running a so-called LGBTQ plus resource center headed by an open lesbian and a homosexual, a move that at least implicitly condones objectively sinful behavior. Nonetheless, Gonzaga certainly isn't the only fake Catholic institution promoting sin. And this is a pattern that I see over and over again in any kind of enterprise that has embraced the sexual revolution. Catholic colleges that uphold church doctrine in our hedonistic culture of death are few and far between. It reminds us of Christ's rhetorical question in the Gospel of Luke. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Church Militant reported in 2019, 20 priests credibly accused of sexual predation had been housed at the Jesuit-owned Cardinal Bee House on Gonzaga's campus. Calls for resignation were made for the former Bishop of Spokane, Blaise Supich. Paul, another good, albeit discouraging, report. You know, you would think that a Catholic university would jump at the opportunity to have someone like Liz Wheeler at their campus. You know, she's not only articulate, but really a wonderful role model. Absolutely no question. She's the kind of person that Catholic colleges should be fighting over to get to speak at some of their campus events. Paul, those watching may not know that you've actually spent years teaching at colleges and universities. Is this the kind of thing that is the norm now to promote what's evil and reject what's wholesome and good? Kim, um, I'd have to say, unfortunately, yes, at least in, for, the several, um, for the past several decades. A couple things have happened. The secular materialism of modern philosophy from the likes of people like Darwin, Marx, and Freud has permeated higher education. And this led to universities teaching shallow and fragmented information, often with the practical aim of, object, of uh, obtaining a job rather than the original purpose of what the university is supposed to be for, and that is the pursuit of truth that leads to wisdom. There's a great dearth, Kim, a great dearth of wisdom coming forth from our colleges and universities today. You know, and, and just to think that countless parents are paying crazy amounts of money, uh, often going into debt, mm. to have their kids indoctrinated by leftist ideology. Yeah, yeah. The pollution of this anti-Christian movement has permeated liberal arts and sciences and college campuses as a whole. 
I remember my old professor at Boston College, Peter Kreeft, used to say most kids go into Catholic colleges as faithful Christians and come out as cynical atheists. And that was back in the 1990s. That is just absolutely horrible yeah. and really, quite frankly, demonic. No question. And, and what is it with Jesuit schools and colleges? Why have so many of them gone completely off the deep end? It's a good question. Well, the Jesuit order, founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola, was very valuable, a very valuable instrument of God in the 16th and century, century, uh, centuries, particularly for combating the Protestant revolts. However, as education fell to se the shallow secular forces of our day, Jesuits seemed to be the first on board, and this means, by definition, compromising the faith. And government money has also been a corrosive factor in leading many so-called Catholic institutions to water down the faith. And Gonzaga seems to be an, uh, you know, a perfect example of this. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's face it. Catholic truth now has become offensive mm -hmm. to many, even professors and administrators. If Catholic universities don't change, you can read the tea leaves. Portions of Catholic theology may become legislated as hate speech. And then good Catholic colleges, not afraid to defend Christian anthropology, marriage, and human life, will be unable to exist. Now, if bishops don't take a strong stand, this seems to be the next step in our society's slippery slope. You know, just last night, we discussed reports that uh, were recently released documenting the rise of Christian persecution in the world, even in Europe, yeah. where many in the media classify Christianity as a hateful ideology. I, I mean, really, it's a growing sentiment regarding Christians among the secular. It's really a, a scary time we're in right now. Yeah, it really is, and it's going downward. But, Kim, the bottom line here, it all comes down to a lack of faith a lack of supernatural faith. Mm -hmm. As Jesus said in the gospel, as mentioned in the report, when the Son of Man comes again, will he find faith on earth? A good question. If you have the faith, hold on to it. There are forces obviously trying to strip it away. And uh, if you have it, be sure to spread it. We need that now more than ever. Thank you so much, Paul.